Welcome back, everybody. Today I got a special for you. So here it is. Thanks, everybody, for subscribing so far. It's been great to see the comments. I uh, got some really good ideas from people, so keep them up. Also, uh, starting to see some people share their work over on the Discord, so don't forget to check that out. Full links in the description, as always. I'm uh, going to be referring back to the model page for Loop Motion. Now, this is a fork of somebody else's workflow. In other words, I've made a slight change to it and then documented everything that you need in a little bit more detail. But I will have to say, and there's full credit at the bottom of the article, this workflow was originally built by Abe, and there's a link to his profile where he's got some of his other work. I'm sure you can check that out. Um, the issue is that if you load your workflow in and you don't have all of the models exactly in the same place, it doesn't actually, uh, doesn't actually take, and you'll have some problems. Uh, so what I've done is I've given you like everything that you're going to need. So there are 12 models. It's mostly animate diff, animate diff motion, control net, IP adapter for 1.5, uh, LCM LoRa for animation, nice, and then the clip vision, and then finally the guidance animation, which is like, may as well just open it up, it's this. That's the guidance animation that we're going to be using for all the videos. And then we'll take a little look at the uh, workflow in just a sec. So uh, an important point is I've put out three versions of this workflow. So loop motion four image is set up with a Boolean switch set so that you just put four images in and off you go. The image generation side has been uh, disabled. So you can just put four images in that you want to experiment with and it will just make the animation. Best part about it is it like loops back to itself. And like I said, Abe deserves full credit for the guts. Four images in is the four image version. One LoRa, okay, only has the SDXL LoRa generation. So on the inside, I'll show you in a minute, the SDXL is going to generate four images and those four images are going to go into IP adapter and animate diff in 1.5. So obviously we're going to resize things. It's all built in. One LoRa means we're only using the LoRa on the way in. Now, Loop Motion 2 LoRa is actually quite cool. So recently we've been doing a lot of stuff with training. So I use not the true world and you'll notice that there's now a 1.5 version. So the idea is that we generate the images on SDXL and then when we do the animate diff, we're also loading the exact same model trained in 1.5. So it's the same tokens trying to get to the same images in both architectures. So we're going to make four images, put it in. And then when it starts doing all of its animation work, it's actually going to pull from the 1.5 version of the same model. So in that way, we reinforce the style that we're training with. And then that means that if we've got a simple style set that we made in SDXL, we've got the option of just using the images in image mode, generating new images with SDXL only, or training a quick SD 1.5 version of the same model, because it's your data set, it's very simple to do. Throw it in there, and then what I did, I'll show you, I hooked up the uh, prompts to the animate side, and then it's all fine. Very slight modifications required to get this to work. So if you want to try this, obviously you're going to need um, probably both of these, and you're also, you won't need to download this, because it uses a URL uh, to load it. You're going to need all of these models. And I will say efficiency nodes, if you already have it, you need to delete it and reinstall it because they've rewritten it. So you've basically got to uninstall efficiency nodes, reinstall efficiency nodes. Yeah, you have to up update your animate diff and your IP adapter plus. And obviously the, uh, the uh, nodes. There's a couple of um, extra things here, which is going to work with this workflow and probably with other workflows that we're going to look at. So. Having them all is good. Essentially, it's the tile, which we don't have for SDXL, which does a lot of work here, and a sparse control as well. Um, there's also the ability to do motion LoRa's, but I'm, I'm just going to show you uh, just the simple... The, I think we go for smoothness is what we're going for in flow. Anyway, let's take a look. Oh, one more thing. I decided to use the Epic Realism model for my 1.5 checkpoint, but you can use whatever you want. Uh, here's Abe. 
So go and check out his other stuff. Morpheus is what this is based on. So there we go. Right, so I've only had to make very small changes to this. Uh, first of all, I changed out, we'll go from the back. So first of all, I changed Rife in for film and he recommends that, so that's on point. Um, if you have a smaller graphics card, probably go back to Rife. I also went straight in because it doesn't like, uh, for a film doesn't like the VRAM debug thing. Uh, but I, again, I didn't need those, so I've disabled them. If you're going to use Rife, try to use Rife 49. Um, so the final video combine is the um, interpolation. So this is going to take us from 12 to 24 frames per second. Um, and that's a multiplier of two, see, set here, right? So that's pretty simple to understand. So that means that this section here is the uh, interpolation. So we're smoothing the animation. So it's the last thing we do. The next last thing we do is the upscale. So we're going to use foolhardy um, remicry and we're going to upscale to 1920 by 1080. The next uh, stage is probably you could look at this a bit like the trip the trio triple latent but there's only two so essentially it's re-rendering the same frames and if you take a look the difference is pretty outstanding you can see the difference there it goes from being a bit not quite done to being done so you definitely got to do that and then obviously once you put the upscaler through it looks really nice so we've got this sort of fluid changing world thing going on here uh, driven by my uh, the style models. Anyway, so here's the actual case sampler for stage two and the case sampler for stage one. So that's all set. You don't need to change anything in here. You don't really need to change anything here at all. You could disable this to get rid of the interpolation and you could disable both of them or just one of them to get rid of the upscaling. That's going to make it run a lot quicker if you're having trouble with speed because it's only going to do these two, and then you can kind of get a feel for what you're doing before you uh, commit. Um, next part here, here's where that URL is. So you could change that, uh, this animation thing here, if you have a different type of uh, image, which you could use to drive the control net, which is, like I said, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's what gives us the lighting we look at this here um it's not just the lighting it's also a bit of the motion as well so anyway it's just a way of doing things and you can experiment with lots of different ones to get it to do different things there's all notes everywhere to explain everything the links for some of the things are in this workbook but some of them were elsewhere and that's why i made this long list for you it shows you where you've got to put it and and then a direct link to where you can get it Okay, let's get back. So control net, don't need to touch that. So let's go over to the settings. Now there's full notes. If you know what you're doing, you can change it. But really all you need to do is make sure that your model, the SD 1.5 model is here. All right. That should be set as what it is. This should be a 1.5 VAE. You could change it if you want, but I recommend the 840,000 DMA. Uh, just here you see that I've got my... Um, I've got my LoRa disabled at the moment. I think it was on for the last generation there, but you know, yeah, disable that. Um, and then we have more stuff, more stuff here. Like I said, most of this, you really don't need to touch. You can just leave it alone. It'll make good results, which are easy to work with. Um, I've set it to plus high strength to match the model that we've got. Okay. So you know, what I've tried to do is make it as easy as possible. If you've downloaded everything and put it in the right place, it should just work out the box. I do apologize if there's a slight path difference, you know, um, but, you know, for example, I think my, my VAE is inside SDXS <laughs> for some reason, the one that's the, you know, so you might decide to use that one. So it might go, oh, I can't find this, but... Eh. Whether it's in a folder or not isn't a big deal. It's definitely the same file, right? Um, we use empty prompts as well when we're not doing the LoRa because there's not, we're not trying to key into it. Uh, but when I do drive, you know, do the two LoRa, I'd actually convert this widget 
into an input and then connect it up to the input text prompt up here. Uh, right now, there's a Boolean up here, which is basically disabling. So if you see here, it says Boolean false. So you get image A on true, you get image B on false. So image B comes from down, down here. So we have, these are the four images which you can use to load your sequence in. All right, so right now I've got like a, uh, a bubble with a building, with a glass cube, with a building. And I've got an, I've got a video which I'll show on the screen now. So the only thing left to mention, of course, is the generation side of things. So if I just say true, now it's going to pick image A, which is going to be image from batch. It's going to make a batch of four images, which are then put into one, two, three, four, or zero to zero, one, two, three, I should say. Um, and then those go into each. Now you don't need to change any of this wiring. The only thing I want to pay attention to is this. This is for SDXL. It's got a, a group node which I've made, which basically contains a bunch of stuff so that it works with both clips. That's all. In fact, if I open it up, let's just uh, undisable this, unbypass this lock. If I just open it, you'll see it's just a group. It's just a group node. That's all it really is. Why is it so big? And so uh, the positive and negative come out. You put positive and negative clip, and then you put positive and G and L. It's just to make sure that you're getting both G and L. Okay, so you know uh, you don't need that for uh, 1.5. So I would do something else if you want to make this all 1.5. Just get a new text to image piece. You could even copy paste the default. That's going to work fine. The only thing you need to modify is this section here with the latent seed batch. All right, and then it will match up. That's all you got to do. Right, so I've got Civit, not the true world. This will be SDXL. And so I'll turn this one on as well. Uh, that's not the button. I'll turn this one on as well. And then we'll do what I was talking about. Convert text to widget. And then I'll just drag this one into there. Done. Nice and easy. That's all we need to do. A quick note, if you put the latent batch seed behavior on fixed, it will make four of the same image. And so then things will shift around less, but because of the randomized noise, you're still gonna get nice movements and animations of things like people, trees blowing, but it does get a bit jumpy. And um, what the guy said in his notes was, we have motion scale here. He said, increasing results in more motion. Now, I've never tried reducing it because I'm happy with the amount of motion I'm getting, but I, I would imagine that you might be able to uh, re reduce it that way too if you're getting too much. But yeah, if we run this, you'll be able to see what it's doing a lot easier. So let's just give it a quick blast. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that I've got it set for 16 to 9, so it's 512 and 288 across all of these. And I did think about, you know, making a primitive and having it set by a thing, but I didn't want to overcomplicate things. And it's not too much work to just go through, like swap these around if you want it to do portrait mode or use 512 by 512 if you want to have a square image. Just got to bear in mind that it's not just changing that. That's just the uh, adapt the IP adapter. And it's like the fade in that it's using so that, so that the animation loops, as you can see, it's, you know, it's overlapping a bit. It's very clever. I love it. Very simple and anyway, effective. Uh, but yeah, what I was going to say was there's other places. So just down here under settings, you've got 512 by 288. So if you're going to switch it around, you've got to switch it around here too. Um, and also if you're doing the actual generation, you're going to want to use, um, I just use 1024 by 1024, which is pretty lazy. You might want to consider adjusting that. So I might put in like 512 there. Um, but then you get into sort of ratio issues. This is why I have my aspect size, but I didn't want to build that in because there's already a lot of stuff on the shopping list to get it running. But it does run excellently. Just make sure that you update the nodes. So you've definitely got to update your nodes, update your comfy get all those models, and then you're away. 
Um, you'll be able to see, are we getting anything out of this yet? Is it still cooking? There we go. It's making a nice animated landscape of a mystical world. Not quite as crazy as this one, but, uh, you know. So just a reminder that all of the prompts for Not the True World are linked. If you go show more, all captions are here. And that will take you to a paste bin where I've put every single caption in the model. And then that way it's easy to know exactly which tokens are going to actually be trained. And then, of course, how to really zone in on an exact thing that was trained. And then, obviously, you can blend that into whatever style you're working on. And uh, Certainly, it's working great. I'm sure that if it was dialed back or if we used a different like not this driving animation, if we use different driving animations, um, it's, this is, this is really promising. So I made a bunch of these, so you can go ahead and create whatever you want. Obviously you can load in any checkpoint and any Laura to get more or less. You can use your own work as we've been looking at on the channel. Uh, but essentially, uh, you want to make visuals for a music video or something. This is going to be like probably the easiest and cheapest way to get it done now. And that was sort of the goal. So all it is now is just getting your images together and planning out how you want it to match the beat. So there you go, guys. So there it is, guys, a loop motion. If I add to this pack, obviously there'll be an update, but at the moment, this is it. It's pretty dynamic. You can use it three ways. All of them are useful. So enjoy it, and I'll see you next time.